Adjustment layers are universally available in all the Affinity apps, which means you can easily apply non-destructive adjustments to any type of layer within your publisher documents. I'll show you a few examples of how you can take advantage of this functionality. I have my cover page here for a recipe cookbook, and although I've got a rectangular overlay behind the logo and text, the background image is too overpowering. I could select the picture frame layer, then go to Layer, New Adjustment, and add a Curves Adjustment. Since I'm working in CMYK here rather than RGB, I can darken the image by clicking and dragging up instead of down. This helps the text and logo stand out against the image. I might also decide that the colors are now too intense, so I can once again select the picture frame and then add a vibrance adjustment. I can then reduce the vibrance to minus 100% to gradually desaturate the more vibrant colors in the image, which works well for this presentation. On pages two and three, I have a series of images contained within picture frames, and I might want to quickly apply an adjustment across all the images simultaneously. The easiest way to achieve this is to select one picture frame, then shift click to select them all. I can then use Command G on Mac, Control G on Windows to group them, which will allow me to apply an adjustment to this group. Let's say I wanted all the images to be black and white. Rather than apply a black and white adjustment, another technique for achieving a nice balanced black and white conversion is to add a channel mixer adjustment. Then change the color model to gray. Now, because this adjustment has been applied to the group, it can affect all the picture frames and therefore the images contained within. If I wanted to alternate between color and black and white images, I could select one of the picture frames, then hold shift and single click, to select every other picture frame. Then finally, I can click drag them on the layers panel and bring them out of the group and above it. Then release the mouse button. The variety of effects that you can achieve with adjustment layers means it is always worth experimenting with them. For example, on pages four and five, I might use a recolor adjustment on the bottom image. I'll change the hue to a light orange and bring the saturation down. Then close the dialog. I could then expand the picture frame and duplicate this adjustment using Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. I'll drag the duplicated copy and clip it into the other picture frame here, which will apply the effect to the top image. Now I'll expand this picture frame and click on the recolor adjustment to bring the dialog up. And I might change the hue here to a blue tone. Now, if I wanted to experiment further with this effect, I could then hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and click the other recolor adjustment to select both adjustment layers. Now I could try changing the blend mode. Perhaps to soft light. This lends an interesting tonality to both images, which I can further control by changing the opacity of the adjustment layers. As a final example, let's look at this next spread. You can see here that I have already used a curves adjustment in the picture frame to provide more separation between the text and the image. But I might also want to selectively desaturate a portion of the image underneath. I can do this by masking an adjustment layer. So I will select the picture frame and then I will add a black and white adjustment. Then bring the red and the yellow contribution sliders down slightly. With the black and white adjustment layer active, I can select the fill tool using G on the keyboard or I can find it on the tools panel here. 
Now I can click drag on my document view to draw out a gradient, holding shift to constrain it along a straight line. Then release the mouse button. You'll notice there are two stops here that can be selected. I'll click on the left hand stop and I want to reduce its color to pure black. I can hold shift when click dragging on one of the RGB sliders to quickly move them all to zero. I can then reposition the two stops until I have the graduated mask effect that I am looking for. Notice that the black and white adjustment now has a black and white thumbnail next to its icon. This indicates that the adjustment is currently being masked. And that was a video covering how to use adjustment layers in Affinity Publisher. I hope you have found it useful and thank you for watching.